Hello everyone, so today I just wanted to go ahead and share something that's more of like a practice piece. Um, I haven't really been posting recently and the reason being I just haven't actually got around to finishing any of my larger pieces that I've been working on. And so I decided that I might as well go ahead and start sharing the smaller practice pieces that I do on a regular basis because that's kind of what I've been spending my time doing. So today it's just like a pretty much just a simple eye, there's nothing particularly special about it. I was trying to practice a little bit more with getting a bit of depth in the iris as well as practicing um, water reflections, so with the tear obviously that kind of water in general has always been something that I've struggled with drawing, so it's something that I tend to practice quite a bit. And I think one thing I still want to get better at is in general eyelashes because as you can see here I feel like I just do too many and it starts looking not really the same way that I, like real eyelashes actually look. I don't think it looks terrible but I definitely think it could be a lot better. I think it's hard for me to figure out how to get like the angles right um, just because how hair works like coming out and then down instead of just going straight up or anything like that is important and I'm still working on figuring out how to do that properly. Um, I am actually somewhat happy with how the tear turned out in this piece. Um, water in general is something that I've always really struggled with. Anything that's transparent or really shiny is somewhat difficult for me so I actually had a fair amount of fun. I think I still need to work on not having the water be so kind of blurred. I think the reflections, when it's a shiny surface, reflections are a lot more sharp and there's distinct areas of dark and light and I don't think I did a great job this time with the tear doing that. Things got a little bit more blurred out and the result is the tear kind of looking almost like frosted glass to me. I don't know if it looks that way to other people, but it looks that way to me. It doesn't quite look like water, but more like frosted glass. So that's another thing that next time I'll be working on, but overall I don't think it turned out too bad. And I've also been experimenting a lot more with Clip Studio paint and just trying to figure out like different layer modes and such. I'm still very much not used to the software, so I did spend a fair amount of time with this particular sketch trying to figure out a little bit more about like layer blending modes so I was especially with the iris here I was playing around with overlays versus say um, is it color dodge and other things like that just to try to kind of get myself a little bit more familiarized with the tools that are available in Clip Studio Paint I've been pleasantly surprised with how natural it's felt to move over to a new program, but I still feel like I only have scratched the very surface of what's available as far as the different tools that there are in the program. So I want to definitely spend some time researching a little bit more, learning more how to use different things better, but I have to say one thing I absolutely love about Clip Studio Paint currently is the blur tool. And I think I get a little bit overexcited at times with this and I should probably cut down on my usage of it occasionally, but one thing I've found with a lot of the other art programs I've used in the past, like Krita, is the blur tool just, it doesn't do what I want it to do, which is um, like smoothing things out. Instead it just tends to make things look fuzzy and almost sometimes even more blotchy than they were in beforehand, and I don't know if I've just not been using them correctly, but I find in Clip Studio Paint it works a lot better for things like larger skin areas where I want things to have a smoother transition and not just be like kind of blotchy because when you're filling in a large area, especially if you have multiple tones going on, um, things tend to get a little bit blotchy and I don't want that. So it's been nice being able to just have that tool and it work really well. So that's one thing I actually have really enjoyed about the switch to Clip Studio Paint. And in general, I think that this piece turned out decently well. I'm actually, for a small practice piece, I'm pretty happy with 
the practice that I was able to get in. I think I definitely have learned a lot more about the program just even through smaller pieces like this. I think I learn a lot more and so I decided I might as well start sharing these sorts of things because this is what I've actually been spending a lot of my time doing. Um, it might not be as big or as um, detailed as some of my other pieces because normally I try to put a lot of time and effort into those pieces but I decided I might as well start sharing these things as well because this is what I actually spend my time doing a lot of the times. So <laughs> I have to say one thing I've noticed is I use a lot of layers. Like I think just for this piece there's probably close to a hundred layers. Maybe not quite that many but it sure feels like there's a lot. So I'm not sure maybe that's something I need to work on is cutting down on all the layers I end up using or at least starting to label them because I am terrible about la labeling all the layers and then I'm spending a lot of time looking for them. So anyways, I hope everybody is having a wonderful day um, and I will be trying to post more things like this in the future. Anyways, see you guys next time.